Today, let's talk about the new Pure Raw app from DxO. It sounds incredible, but can it actually make our raw files better? Just recently, the folks at DxO released a new piece of software called Pure Raw. And before we go any further, just FYI that DxO has no idea I'm making this video. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and I paid full price for my copy of Pure Raw. The idea of creating enhanced RAW files while maintaining a Lightroom and Photoshop based workflow intrigued me, so I just wanted to check it out, and I thought you might too. The short story is that Pure Raw allows you to apply DxO's noise removal and lens corrections to RAW files without having to give up your favorite imaging software. And it's super easy to use. There's almost nothing to learning it, but there are some great tutorials and reviews out there already, and I've linked to some below if you'd like to go deeper than I'm gonna go. Particularly watch the one by my friend Photo Joseph where he breaks down how it can fit into a variety of different workflows. So I use Adobe Lightroom or Camera Raw to make my raw level adjustments, and I like how smoothly Lightroom and Photoshop integrate. However, Adobe isn't the best at all things. DxO has become well known for their noise removal and lens corrections, but until now you needed to switch over to their full editing suite to access them. The new Pure Raw app uses this super simple interface to apply DxO's noise removal and lens correction algorithms while integrating with just about any other editing application you might be using. It works in three easy steps. Number one, drag raw images into it. Number two, click the process photos button. And number three, export the new deep prime DNG raw files it generates to Lightroom, Photoshop, or any other editing or asset management software that you use. That's it. Because Pure Raw imports raw files and also outputs new DNG raw files, it allows us to apply DxO's enhancements without sacrificing our normal raw workflow. According to DxO, the new DNG raw files should have just as much image information as the original, so you can still make the same raw adjustments in Lightroom or Camera Raw, as well as open them as raw smart objects in Photoshop. It remains to be seen if I'll utilize Pure Raw on every image I edit or reserve it just for special cases. But let's look what I found on a few different images. I'll start with a couple of best case scenarios. These images were taken at ISO 100 with the EOS R5, which is Canon's latest and greatest 45 megapixel full frame camera and has great dynamic range and ISO performance. The real benefit of Pure Raw should really come with images that have a lot of high ISO noise, shadow recovery challenges, or distortion and softness from a less than stellar lens. So there may not be much room for improvement with these images. It is possible to apply Lightroom adjustments before going to Pure Raw, and those adjustments will automatically transfer to the new DNG Raw file when it imports back to Lightroom but I'm gonna wait and do my edits on these later. I'm also gonna turn off chromatic aberration removal, lens correction, sharpening, and noise removal in Lightroom since Pure Raw is gonna handle all that. DxO mentions that applying lens corrections a second time or sharpening a second time in Lightroom can give less than optimal results. Now we need to get the images into Pure Raw. Photo Joseph shows in his video that on Macs, you can simply drag images directly from Lightroom to Pure Raw. Unfortunately, this trick doesn't work in the Windows version of Lightroom. So instead, you have to right click on an image to open it in Explorer, and then drag the raw file from there into Pure Raw. Pure Raw prompts me to download the DxO lens correction module for the camera and lens combination that took the image. It's nice that you only download the modules that you need when you need them, but the modules are saved on your computer so you won't need to download them again. Now that the images are in Pure Raw, all you do is click Process Photos. The settings are pretty self-explanatory. I'm just using the Deep Prime setting for this video, but you can take a look at some of the other tutorials if you want to find out what the other options do. 
Now just click process and let it chug away. It does take a little while, but it feels faster than the Topaz apps, although I haven't actually tested that yet. When processing is complete, you have the choice to view the before and after versions of the image right here in the app, but I'm just gonna round trip it directly back to my Lightroom catalog where I can view the images and also make adjustments. This takes us directly to the Lightroom import window. Again, I'm not gonna apply any preset lens corrections, sharpening or noise removal on import since Pure Raw already did all that. Once imported, I can see the new DxO DNGs right here next to the original RAW files. So now I'll head over to the develop module and on the new DNG RAW file, I'll do a quick auto adjust just to apply some adjustments quickly for this video. And then I'll fine tune them a little bit. And then I'm gonna sync those adjustments over to the original RAW file as well. As I said, this first image was taken on the Canon R5 at ISO 100, and it was well exposed, so it has really low noise and doesn't require much in the way of shadow recovery or other adjustments. So I'm gonna to go to reference view so we can compare the two. I'm gonna select the original RAW file as the active image and then drag the new DNG into the reference window so we can compare them side by side. One thing I noticed with a lot of images is that even though we synced all the settings, the original RAW file will have a different exposure value and contrast and white balance setting than the new DNG file. I don't know why that is, and normally you wouldn't care because you'd only be working with the new RAW file, but I'm trying to get them to look the same for the comparison in the video. To the original RAW, let's apply Lightroom lens corrections and chromatic aberration removal. Now let's zoom into 100%, and I'm gonna apply some Lightroom color noise removal, just the default amount. At ISO 100, this image doesn't really have any luminance noise, but I could remove that if I needed to. And then I can work with the sharpening and the detail to better match the sharpness of the DxO RAW file. So in this image, it looks like Lightroom can actually match the results of Pure Raw pretty closely. And in fact, I think the sharpening in Pure Raw is a little aggressive for my taste. Now let's zoom out and take a look at another part of the image up here with the lighthouse and the tree. Again, I think the detail in both of them is great. A little over sharp, I think, in Pure Raw. But all in all, they, they both look great. I think in the background here, what I'm noticing is the amount of sharpening I did in Lightroom to try to get it to match Pure Raw is a little, you may not see it in the video, but there are some definite artifacts in the hills in the back there. So I actually think maybe I like how Pure Raw handles the more distance sharpening better. And let's just look one more spot up here close in the foreground rocks. And again, like I said, that pure raw sharpening is a little aggressive for me, but actually the proof would be in what a final print would look like. Okay, let's go over to the second image, which is also from the R5 at ISO 100, but a lot of shadow recovery has been done in the underexposed parts of the image. You can see that shadow recovery here. So let's take a look up close and see how they compare. The Pure Raw file is definitely much sharper and cleaner, maybe overly sharp, depending on what you're going for. But let's check the shadows. I think this is where we'll really notice a difference. Yeah, definitely. Even with the Lightroom noise reduction and sharpening, it's just not as clean in the shadows or as much information and detail as from Pure Raw. And let's check this little area down here for some other details kind of in the edge of the frame. Again, pure raw, just really clean details and much more information and cleaner shadows compared to the original. And even some of these trees up here in the fog, the details that come out in the pure raw file are just much better. So it looks like even images taken with the R5 at ISO 100 can be improved by Pure Raw if a lot of shadow recovery is required. But now let's move over to where Pure Raw should really shine, 
images taken on older cameras at much higher ISO settings. This image was taken on the Canon 5D Mark II at ISO 800, and this is what it looked like before I made the Lightroom adjustments to recover the shadows. I'll zoom in down here so we can compare and I can see that Pure Raw is really giving us superior shadow details and clarity and sharpness and even I think better colors. Even with the Lightroom noise and sharpening adjustments trying to replicate, it's just not coming anywhere close. And if we look over in this area, we see the same thing. Again, Pure Raw, much better details and shadow clarity and the water color and texture is just superior. And finally, just look down in one more area just to compare. Again, so much more detail and again, the water texture and color much better. So as ISO settings go up and maybe lens quality goes down, this looks like where Pure Raw can really outdo what Lightroom can accomplish. So now let's take it up a notch with another image taken on the Canon 5D Mark II, but this time at ISO 1600. Adjustments have already been synced to the two RAW files, so let's zoom in and compare. So it looks like as the ISO settings go up, the more pure RAW can outperform what Lightroom can accomplish. The moss here is just much more sharp and detailed, and also in the water, there's more noise and less clarity and detail in the white water, and the colors are better in the pure RAW file. And if we zoom in on this area up here, just to do one more comparison, we can see that, yeah, the pure raw file, the details in the ferns and the water and the grasses, as well as the colors and the shadows, just far superior from pure raw. Let's take it up another level and look at a night sky image taken on the 5D Mark III at ISO 3200. This is what the original raw file looked like before doing the shadow recovery adjustments. High ISO shadow recovery from pure darkness of night is never going to be great, so using other methods to get a cleaner landscape exposure would be the way to go in this situation, but it's still fun to see how pure raw handles such an extreme case. So let's start by looking at the area around the mountain where the Milky Way is coming down, and right off we can see that pure raw, even though it's noisy, is just much cleaner. It's amazing what it's able to pull out of there. And the original raw file is really just a mess. Now let's look down in the corner at the water by these rocks. Not great in pure raw, but again, compared to where I could get it to with Lightroom, really no comparison all throughout both the water and the details up here in the shoreline and the hills. And if we look at the sky to check out the stars, the amount of noise reduction I did in Lightroom has actually made a bunch of our stars go away, while in pure raw, they're still all there. And for this final example, we'll go to an image taken with the Canon R5, but at ISO 12,800 in very dim twilight in the darkness of a forest. Here's what the original RAW file looked like before any shadow recovery adjustments were made. And so you can get an appreciation for just how much noise that we're dealing with here. I'm going to go into the detail tab on the original RAW file and turn off the Lightroom noise reduction and just look at all that color and luminance noise. So when I zoom in on the pure RAW file and the original RAW file, the comparison of the noise levels is really off the chart. Now when I turn the Lightroom noise reduction back on, it did a pretty good job at reducing the noise, but look at how much detail is lost. I mean, the branches here are just so much sharper. And if I zoom in down to the footprints in the snow and compare the pure raw file to the original, again, there's just no comparison in that snow texture or in the texture of the really shadowed tree trunk here on the, on the left. And let's just zoom into one other spot, this cabin on the lake shore back here. And again, just look at the difference in the details of the branches, as well as the cabin and the snow. Just everything is so much better. Knowing just how much noise was in this image, it's pretty impressive how well 
Pure Raw can remove it while maintaining those fine details. So what are my overall thoughts on Pure Raw? Well, I still need to use it more, but there are certainly arguments that you could make for using it on every raw image. Although on well-exposed, low ISO images that don't need a lot of shadow recovery, the gains will be minimal and perhaps not worth the additional workflow step or the additional raw file. If there's anything to complain about, it would be that it may over sharpen for some people's taste and doesn't have a way to control sharpness. I also noticed some color and exposure differences between the DNG file and the original raw file, but nothing I haven't been able to compensate for so far. For images taken on older cameras or with lower quality lenses, running them through pure raw is kind of like you took them with a newer, better camera. Many of my older images could now get a new lease on life. And as we saw, Pure Raw also opens the door for shooting at much higher ISOs on any camera. This is a big deal if you've ever wished you could get away with bumping up the ISO, whether it's for wildlife or action photography, low light photography without needing a tripod, or night sky photography in general. With the R5, if I'm using the in-body stabilization combined with an image stabilized lens, I can take the ISO up to maybe 16 or 3200, and I think I could still be able to get okay quality handheld shots, even at twilight. At the current price of $90, it isn't super cheap, and apparently the price goes up to $129 at the end of May. This seems like a lot for how simple it is, but on the other hand, if someone was selling a filter, a lens, or a tripod for $90 that could improve some of my raw files this much, I think it would seem totally worth it. Anyway, I hope that look at DxO's new Pure Raw app has been useful. Leave a comment if you have any questions I didn't cover. Thanks always for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.